Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything, and I'm coming at you with another Wargaming and Miniature video. In this video, we're going to be continuing on with our 148 Tactic German Miniature Painting. And in this video, we're painting Ludwig Geier. Uh, Ludwig Geier is wearing a trench coat, and that trench coat uh, is displayed poorly in this artistic picture. It shows it as mainly a gray which is fine. I could just leave it gray like this. But what I want to do is I want to enhance it and make it field gray. So I'm going to, which is a German, which I think it should be field gray. So I'm using the Tamaya color field gray as my base coat of the winter overcoat. So let's go ahead and paint his winter overcoat field gray. Now you can kind of see that this field gray uh, is not much different than the primer. It is a little bit different. It's got a little bit more green in it. Just a little bit. Um, the pants I'm going to leave as a as a gray. Now, you might ask Mr. Everything, Mr. Everything, uh, what primer color did you use for these German models? I used self-etching primer. Uh, and the self-etching primer comes out almost exactly field gray. I probably didn't even have to paint these guys. You know, but I just wanted to add that little extra green to the jacket. Now, I'm not going to paint his pants. Um, I'm going to leave them the gray primer color because traditionally the Germans in World War II would have like gray pants, but they would have this gray green. Uh, jacket or coat. It'd be like a wool coat or a wool jacket and it would be kind of a gray green color which is they called field gray. And if you miss a spot don't sweat it because it kind of blends in with the primer. I'm just trying not to miss a spot. And I'm also hitting his the top that covers the back of his head. He's got this little winter uh, hoodie on. There we go. He looks good. All right, so now we're just going to set him off to the side, let him dry a little bit, and we'll be right back. All right, the next color we're going to put on Ludwig Geier is German gray. It's a it's a dark, dark gray. And we're going to apply that to his helmet. And we're going to leave it and let it dry. All right, the next color we're going to use is the German Camouflage Black Brown. We're using that for the lower half of the boot, the actual combat boot itself, uh, because the upper part has like a gator strap thing, kind of like a biker's boot. Uh, but these are late war German combat boots were brown not black. Early war Germans were black. Those are kind of like jack boots, but those are relegated to uh, marching and parades. When it came to combat, they went with these brown combat boots. 
All right, so we're gonna let that brown dry a bit and then we'll be right back. All right, now in Ludwig Geyer, we're gonna use a little bit of wood brown. Now this wood brown is gonna go on his canteen cover. It's not a wood canteen cover, it is kind of a brown uh, leather. And then we're gonna paint his entrenching tool handle. Um, I'm also gonna paint his grenade handle. Now he's got some grenades sticking out of this bag, or handles, so I want to make sure they're brown as well. And this bag as well. Okay, so he's got some potato mashers out of there and in there. He's got one in his hand. And also, his entrenching tool handle and his canteen cup. All right, and we're gonna set him off to the side. All right, and this next color is gonna be German Camo Beige. And that German Camo Beige is gonna be the top of his gaiters. should say the top of his combat boots which are the gaiters we're also going to paint his haversack this color MP40 magazine pouches. Okay, it looks like these bags should be colored that same color, so we're going to go ahead and paint his bags. Forty pouches, magazine pouches, that is, and grenade bags. Now the grenade bags. Have straps on them. All right, so we got the. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's his collar. Okay. Yep, that looks good. So we're going to set him off to the side, let that dry a little bit, and then we'll be back with the next color. All right, the next color on Ludwig is going to be Polyus's Black Green. It's what I like to use for gas mask canisters.
the mess kit pretty much anything metallic back here this mess kit the top of his canteen which is a canteen cup and the head of the grenade, which is uh, the potato masher grenade right there, will be a black green. All right, we're going to let that sit and we'll be back with the next color. Okay, the next color we're going to use is a licorice black. We're going to paint his MP40 that color. Almost looks like an M3 grease gun. Yeah, but we're going to paint it front and back. I'm going to paint his entrenching tool cover. like so all right we're gonna let that dry and we'll come on back with the next color actually I'm gonna paint his belt buckle with that there we go now nope hold on I'm jumping the gun LBE straps come to the front too set this guy up to the side and let him dry for a little bit. All right, now the next color we're going to use is natural steel. I'm only using natural steel for the weapon. And I'm only covering the parts that already painted black. And that's it. Just the just the weapon. All right, setting them off to the side, letting it dry. All right, now the next color is not really going to be a color. It's a wash. I'm using light tone. I use two drops light tone, one drop water to cover this model. Um, I mean, that's the ratio. I'm actually using more than two drops, but you get the idea. For every two drops of light tone I put in my palette, I put one drop of water. And we're just going to slather it on, covering the entire model with a thick coat of wash. 
And what will happen is it will settle down into all the cracks and crevices and creases of the fabric. It will enhance the details and it will bring them out. So now what we're going to do is we're going to set this off to the side and we're going to let it dry. All right, the next color we're going to use on Ludwig here is the German Camouflage Orange Ochre. Now on this model, we're going to paint his sling this color. So lo locate the sling. Avoid hitting the MP40 pistol grip or the magazine okay front and back now the sling up front there we go wraps around the barrel it looks like And it's okay if you leave a little bit of the black or a little bit of the gray shining through because that just gives you enhanced shadows. All right, so now what I also want to do is highlight these bags. I'm not painting the bags. I'm just applying a very light highlight of some of the raised areas of the bags. and the bag straps. All right, so we're gonna let that guy sit off to the side. He's gonna drive for a minute, and we'll go on to the next car. All right, now on Ludwig Geyer, he's got a field drab, I'm sorry, he's got a field gray uh, winter overcoat, and we're gonna go ahead and use Army Painters German Army Field Gray as the highlight. It's very similar, if not just a little bit lighter than the Tamaya Field Gray, but they're almost exactly the same color. And remember, whenever you're doing highlights, you're hitting raised areas or smooth areas. Uh, you're not painting down into the folds of the fabric. So like that seam, I would not paint into that. If you see stretched fabric, you want to paint the raised areas and leave the low areas, the original washed field gray. This is also the opportunity that you have to correct any overpainting. 
like hypothetically if I got some of this wood on his jacket this would be where I would correct that but luckily I didn't using a 3O brush to do this. You can use finer tips if you want. You can use fatter tips if you want. However, whatever you feel is the best for your painting. Elbows are usually stretched. So they're usually needed to be highlighted. This is tedious, but it pays off in the end. Side of this arm. Whoops. All right, he's highlighted. Now we're going to let him set off to the side and dry before we move on to the next color. All right, the next color and the final color is the Tamaya Field Gray, and we're going to paint that on his base edge all the way around uh, to give it an even field gray color all the way around. Okay. Yep. Now we're going to let that set and dry and then we'll be back with the next steps. Alright, the next step for Ludwig here is to apply glue to the base. I'm using Elmer's, straight Elmer's, not watered down. I'm applying it thick so you see white uh, all over the base. And we're just doing the top of the base, but we're getting beside, in front of, and behind the boots. And you see a little bit of the sprue sticking up. We got to make sure that that's covered. And there is a slight hole right here in the front of the base where the sprue didn't go all the way to the front. I like to bridge that gap with a little bit of Elmer's temporarily because if I leave it like that, it will seep and drop out the bottom. But if I drop a couple of stones on there and then sprinkle my talus, it will grip that Elmer's
before it gets a chance to soak through the hole. Okay, and then I set that off into a box and let that rest for about 30 minutes as the talus soaks in to the glue. Okay, now on Ludwig, we're going to apply some Elmer's glue using our synthetic brush. Uh, we're not brushing it on, we're kind of patting it down into the stones. They're already there making sure not to cover any of the larger stones that we sprinkled on in the earlier step. If we see any gaps or holes in the stones, make sure we fill that up now so we can add grass there. That'll disguise any imperfections in the stonework. Apply the glue in random patterns. And try to cover about two thirds of the base. That looks good. Now we just sprinkle the grass on, covering the entire base, mounding it up layering it so that when it soaks into the glue it'll adhere better. Now we let that sit for about 30 minutes and then we come back. All right now this one is Ludwig Geyer. Good old Ludwig. Flocked base. All right. All right, now here is all seven. You got your four starters and then the three expansion guys. Uh, so tell me what you think about the way I painted these guys and uh, in the comments below. And be sure to go also go back and check out my 101st paratrooper painting videos as well. Uh, if you like these videos, go ahead and like and subscribe to my channel and continue on watching because we're going to paint some of the terrain next. All right, and I'll catch you next time.